The Chinese PLA Navy has seen radical and exponential growth over the last decade in terms of tonnage, firepower, and blue water capability. This video is a simple guide to the surface fleet of the People's Republic of China. If you haven't done so already, please do subscribe to my channel and be updated on new contents. This can save you a lot of time and also helps me to grow the channel. Because this is such a massive topic, I need to be very clear about what I'm counting. In this video, I am looking at surface warships and major amphibious transports only, so no submarines or auxiliary support vessels. I am counting all warships that are currently in service or are expected to be commissioned in 2022, but no later. The PLA Navy operates two medium-sized aircraft carriers, which carry mostly the J-15 fighter. There are approximately 50 destroyers, including some of the very best designs in the world. The Navy has commissioned 47 frigates and 72 corvettes. It also operates one of the world's largest submarine forces. The exact number of active submarines is a state secret, but there are at least seven ballistic missile submarines, about a dozen nuclear attack subs, and at least 60 conventional attack sub subs in service. In terms of amphibious warfare capability, there are three landing helicopter docks and eight amphibious transport docks, along with 36 smaller tank landing ships. In terms of smaller combatants, the PLA Navy possesses 106 missile attack boats and 26 submarine chasers. Let's start with the two conventionally powered aircraft carriers, the Liaoning and the Shandong. Both ships technically belong to the same class as the Russian Admiral Kuznetsov aircraft carrier, although there are major differences after decades of modifications. The Chinese aircraft carriers each displaces around 66,000 tons, and carries somewhere north of 40 aircrafts. The Liaoning was formerly known as the Vayag when it was under construction by the Soviet Union. China purchased the ship from Ukraine when it was half completed at a heavily discounted bargain price. The ship, then renamed Liaoning, was overhauled into a combat-capable carrier. While it is often described as a training carrier in the Chinese and Western medias, it is clear that the Liaoning is fitted with the requisite radars, air wings, and command facilities to be a fully combat-capable warship. Shandong is a domestically built and improved version of the Liaoning. It fills the gap in naval aviation capability, while China is developing and building more advanced aircraft carriers. Shandong features a smaller island, which allows for a larger hangar to house eight more aircrafts than the Liaoning, and the angle on the ski jump is more ideal for launching the J-15 carrier fighter. On paper, the J-15 is a very capable fourth-generation carrier aircraft. The problem is that it is heavy, and because it has to launch from a ski jump, the J-15 can carry only a fraction of the fuel and missiles it is designed to carry. This means that it can only be armed for combat air patrol and forgo bombs and anti-ship missiles. The limited fuel also places the J-15 at a disadvantage compared to U.S. carrier fighters. These problems can be addressed by developing new carrier fighters and by building larger aircraft carriers with better aircraft launch systems. China is doing both. The Jiangnan Shipyard in Shanghai is constructing a third conventionally powered aircraft carrier, known simply as the Type 003. This is projected to be almost as large as the American Ford-class carrier, displacing 85,000 to 100,000 tons. This is expected to have the advanced electromagnetic catapult for launching jet aircraft. The Type 003 is due to be launched in early 2022 and could be commissioned in late 2023 at the earliest. Despite the media hype, my personal opinion is that the Chinese carrier force is still in early development, but China certainly has the resources and the technology to get very far in naval aviation. The PLA Navy's inventory of destroyers 
show a fair deal of variation in terms of their combat's capability. You can probably divide them into three tiers in terms of overall quality. The top tier consists of 34 state-of-the-art destroyers that are prized for their powerful air defense. I am of course referring to the Type 55 Large Destroyer and the Type 52D Destroyer. The Type 55 is a monstrous ship that displaces about 13,000 tons. It is heavily armed with a huge number of VLS or vertical launch cells to carry missiles, 112 in total, which is more than any US Navy destroyer. They carry a mix of supersonic anti-ship missiles, land attack missiles, and long-range surface-to-air missiles, depending on what the mission demands. Its air defense umbrella is managed by a powerful, active, electronically scanned array radar. The Type 55 is one of the most powerful warships in the world. The Type 52D destroyer is basically a scaled-down version of the Type 55. It doesn't have as many missiles, with only 64 VLS. However, on a qualitative level, the air defense umbrella of the Type 52D is quite similar to its larger cousin. The main difference is that it has a slightly less powerful main radar. To learn more, I highly recommend you watch my video on the Type 52D destroyer. The link is on the top right hand corner. This slick warship combines both power and external beauty pretty well. In the second tier are the six Type 52C destroyers and two of the Type 51C. They are reasonably good air defense platforms, but will struggle to handle a large number of incoming missiles in the saturation attack, and will probably struggle a bit to intercept the most advanced supersonic and sea skimming missiles. These warships use an older revolver style VLS, which limits the firing rate for surface to air missiles, and has less VLS than the top tier destroyers. They also have less powerful radars, especially in the case of the Type 51C destroyer that still employs a passive phased array radar, as opposed to an active phased array. Don't get me wrong though, those systems are still quite capable, and are still used to some extent in the US and the Russian navies. They are just not state of the art. The Tier 3 destroyers consist of the four Russian-built Sovereignty class, and five of the legacy destroyers designed decades ago. These ships are not suited to an area air defense role, they lack long-range SAMs, and many of them still use obsolete single SAM launchers, which can only fire a couple of missiles before having to reload. That said, as large warships, they still carry a large number of anti-ship cruise missiles, and can contribute to the offensive firepower of a task force. For example, the four Sarimony class and the single Type 51B carry the YJ-12 anti-ship missile, which is still very deadly but they do need the air defense umbrella of more modern destroyers. Frigates are generally very versatile warships. The workhorse of the PLA Navy's frigates is the Type 54A, also known as the Junkai 2 class, of which there are 32. They are not the most advanced frigates in the world, but are highly affordable and can perform a wide range of missions. They have good anti-air capabilities at medium range, with the HQ-16A surface-to-air missile, and can supplement the larger destroyers to provide a layered air defense umbrella. As relatively expendable units, they are useful for anti-submarine screening duties. They are equipped with the U-8 ASW missile and the towed array sonar, and most of them also have a variable depth sonar, making them effective submarine hunters. The older frigates, the original Type 54 and the Type 53 H3 series are more limited in what they can do. They don't have area air defense weapons because their SAM is good only for self-defense, but these older warships can still fire their 8 YJ-83 cruise missiles to support a missile strike. They can serve as anti-submarine escorts for large task force and help to deny enemy submarines access to high-value targets. However, they seem to have only a standard hull-mounted sonar, which will severely limit their sonar detection range. This makes them not suited for ASW patrols, 
which requires good sonars. As the PLA Navy acquires more Type 54A frigates, and they are expected to eventually commission about 50 of these, the older frigates will be gradually phased out of service. Most of the PLA Navy's corvettes are quite new. Again, they are not the best corvettes, but are competitive designs nonetheless. They are intended for coastal patrol, particularly ASW, and they do have limited anti-ship firepower. These corvettes have sufficient freeboard and sea-keeping qualities to operate on the open ocean, but the limiting factor to distance operations is the space for fuel and supplies. The Type 56A is the more useful class for ASW patrols. They are equipped with a full sonar suite, including a towed array sonar system and a variable depth sonar, which is uncommon for a small warship. They can also carry an ASW helicopter that should be able to operate safely close to the Chinese coastline. The Type 56A Corvette is an effective, low-cost option for ASW missions. The original Type 56 Corvette is less capable in the anti-submarine role, because they only have a standard hull-mounted sonar. In all honesty, the Type 56 is an earlier model that has been superseded by the Type 56A and don't really have a niche right now. The Central Military Commission has recently transferred some of the Type 56 Corvettes to the Chinese Coast Guard, where they can be put to better use. It's not clear whether they're transferring all 22 Corvettes. They might decide to install better sonars on some of the units and upgrade them to the Type 56A model. China is rapidly expanding its amphibious warfare capability. It has built 11 large amphibious assault ships, including three landing helicopter docks and eight amphibious transport docks. The Type 75 LHD displaces 40,000 tons, has a full-length flight deck for helicopters, and a floodable well deck to disembark hovercrafts and amphibious armored vehicles. It can carry about 30 aircrafts and 1,000 marines. However, China does not yet operate a fixed-wing aircraft capable of vertical takeoff and landing, like the American F-35B, for example. This precludes the use of the Type 75 as a small aircraft carrier, at least for, at least for now. The Type 71 LPD is smaller at 25,000 tons, with less of a carrying capacity. It holds about 800 marines, the assortment of amphibious vehicles, and six helicopters. The Type 71 is also suited for peacetime humanitarian assistance, disaster relief missions, and civilian evacuation from unstable areas. Both the Type 75 LHD and the Type 71 LPD have solid self-defense weapons, including short-range SAM, close-in weapon systems, and electronic decoy launchers. However, they will require the protection of surface combatants, especially against enemy submarines. China also operates 36 medium-sized amphibious transports, known as landing ship tanks. These weigh around 4,000 tons and can carry 250 marines and a dozen armored vehicles. They have a bow door and a low stern ramp for unloading amphibious vehicles into the water close to a landing zone. There is a swarm of fast missile boats, each the size of a small corvette. These are low-cost attack crafts whose sole purpose is to get into range to fire their anti-ship missiles. They have very little defensive ab abilities, and instead rely on friendly air cover and a low profile to survive. The best design is the 82 Type 22 fast missile boats, which are very heavily armed for their size, with 8 YJ-83 cruise missiles. They use a catamaran hull design that enables a high speed on the open sea. They feature a compact, polygonal superstructure which helps to limit radar cross-section and improves the boat's survivability. The Type 37 series of corvettes is an older design with no stealth features to speak of and a slower speed and only half of the missile payload of the Type 22. They also don't have the sea keeping to operate outside of coastal waters. Some of the Type 37 hulls 
have been modified into submarine chasers, but they are only armed with rocket-propelled depth charges, which lack the range to effectively combat submarines. The Type 37 are being gradually phased out of service. The surface fleet of the Chinese Navy is likely to continue expanding over the next two decades, with the momentum driven by the fundamental geopolitical contest between China and the United States. Recent trends suggest that the PLA Navy is done with building small warships such as corvettes, and is looking to construct more blue water capable warships like destroyers and aircraft carriers. We haven't touched on submarines at all in this video, but China has recently expanded its production facilities for both nuclear and conventional submarines. This suggests an imminent acceleration in submarine production. This concludes my overview on the surface fleet of the PLA Navy. If you like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, I would really appreciate it, and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.